It seems that the Mandalorian will be getting a lot more action in Season 2, and this may or may not help with some of our casting theories. Let's talk about that right now. Hello everybody and welcome back to another movie news video. My name is Joker and today we're talking about how the Mandalorian Season 2 is about to get a lot more action. So when it comes to a property like Star Wars, you'd figure with the word wars being in the title that there would be some action on screen at one point or another and in some way shape or form. And that's exactly what happens in every rendition of Star Wars we've seen, whether it's in a video game, in the movies, or in any of the TV shows. And The Mandalorian is no exception. With the success of Season 1 telling us a great new story in the Star Wars universe, it gave us quite a bit of action, but it did what it should have. As a premiere season for a new Star Wars show, it gave us more of the building story and what the whole series was going to be about, and then added the action later. And the action was never a hit or miss situation. It always hit on point exactly as it should. And now with the news coming directly from Collider Video that we may be seeing more action-packed sequences in Season 2, it leads me thinking, how much action are we going to be seeing and does this help with the casting theories that we've been having for the past several months? So while discussing his new Netflix film Extraction starring Chris Hemsworth, Sam Hargrave, the director, talked about how he has been brought on to the cast of The Mandalorian Season 2 as the second unit director, to which he will be in charge of several action sequences throughout the entire second season. I think this is a really cool thing to talk about because most of the time when we mention behind the scenes looks, not necessarily actors that are being cast in either TV shows or in movies, I'll typically talk about who is being directed or who is being brought on to compose something for the film. For example, you know, we'll talk about James gun being brought on to do DC's uh, The Suicide Squad or something to that degree, but we never get to talk about second unit directors or any alternate directors or producers, so having the story come out is pretty neat. So as I just mentioned, Sam Hargrave was the director for Extraction, a Netflix original movie starring Chris Hemsworth that had a lot of action-packed sequences in it, and because of this, the movie did very well, it was a really well-told story, and it's already been brought up for consideration to get potential sequels. But on top of that, he's done a lot more work than just this one movie. He's also worked as the second unit director and stuntman for films such as Atomic Blonde, Suicide Squad, Deadpool 2, and Avengers Infinity War, as well as Endgame. So he definitely is not new to the scene and definitely knows what he's doing when it comes to directing action-packed sequences, which is what I think is really great, is having someone that already has experience in this side of the field and is willing to want to come on board with him already talking about what he's envisioning with The Mandalorian Season 2 and how some of the fights could go. It just gets me kind of pumped knowing that someone is this passionate about what he does as a second unit director and is already thinking about what he can bring to the plate that is new to the world of The Mandalorian. Now, we had two rather large quotes in this Collider interview, so the link is in the description below if you'd like to go read the whole thing. I definitely recommend you check it out because it is a really informative interview where he talks about what it is to go through as a second unit director and stuntman and work on all of these action sequences and all of these big label movies. So it's a really cool way to see films from other perspectives. But one of the quotes I want to read off to you guys is just so interesting because it talks about how he would go about with the fights and the action sequences in The Mandalorian just based off how the characters have already been established from season one. So in this interview with Collider he said, with that being said, the balance you have to find and the truth you have to adhere is to the characters you developed. So if you have a character, and for this guy who's more of a gunslinger and a bit more of a brawler, it would be out of character for him to come into scene and throw a round off backwards double flip and do a crazy kick just because you can, or because he has a helmet on. You have to remember to stay true to the character. So yes, you can put whoever you want in there, but you have to make sure that you rein in the excitement and make sure you're true to the character and the story. Basically, what he's talking about in there is off of someone else that they said that when Pedro Pascal was brought on to be the Mandalorian himself, he is not the one in the suit when he's on screen, and he's definitely not the one in the suit when he's going through all the fight sequences. So knowing that you can literally put whoever you want in the outfit and put them on screen that can do any kind of acrobatics you'd want them to do, but if it's not true to the character, there's no point in doing that. Like he said, there's no point in him coming in and doing a backflip and kicking someone in the head or something like that, because that's just out of character. That's not something he would do. And the other thing I liked about that is the fact that he mentioned that the Mandalorian's always going to be wearing a helmet. And because of that, his vision will be impaired during fights, so he's not going to be able to see literally everyone around him, so he has to act accordingly. So him already understanding that and showing how to do that on screen, I think is phenomenal and really interesting. I've never thought, I never really looked into a lot of the second unit directors and what they do. I know a lot more about that from the Lord of the Rings side of things, where they did do a lot of the side filming and a lot of the action sequences, but I've never seen it in ways like this, so it's really cool to see what they have to say. But with all of this in mind, it does lead me to a few questions as to what Season 2 is going to have story-wise and action-wise and character-wise. And I say that because bringing in Hargrave to be the second unit director to do more action sequences, 
I don't know if that necessarily means we're just going to get a lot more action in it, or if we're going to get more precise fighting between certain main characters. As we all know, there is the long-standing rumor that Rosario Dawson is going to be cast as Ahsoka in Season 2. Again, there is still no confirmation on that. We're still waiting for that, especially since Season 2 comes out in October, so it's really only a few months away. But seeing that Moff Gideon has been shown in the end of Season 1 to have the Darksaber, you might get some lightsaber fight scenes in this season. So having a lightsaber fight between two characters like that might want you to think about who to get as a director to make sure that these action scenes sequences are true to the characters that we already know, in this case being Ahsoka and the newly created Moff Gideon. And on top of that, there's also the talk of Tamora Morrison, who has been confirmed to return to some role that he's had in the past, either as potentially Boba Fett or the fact that he could be playing Captain Rex. And in this case, if you wanted to have the Mandalorian face off against Boba Fett, that would be a pretty big fight between two well-known bounty hunters. So you'd want to have pretty great fight scenes for that as well. Or you can talk about Timothy Oliphant, who has been confirmed to be in the show. We don't know who, but it is rumored that he could be playing Cobb Vanth, who was another sheriff kind of slash bounty hunter who was brought up in the Star Wars Aftermath book series by Chuck Wendig, who could also be fighting against Boba Fett. Since if it's going to be Cobb Vanth in the Aftermath books, he did take his armor off of a Jawa Sandcrawler. It was all like destroyed and looked like it had been melted down. So maybe it could be Boba Fett coming to fight him to get his armor back or something to that degree. There's a lot of thought you can put into this as far as iconic characters on screen that we already know fighting. So you might want to put more thought into the action you're seeing on screen instead of just having the Mandalorian coming out into a field full of stormtroopers and just, you know, guns a-blazing. And of course, none of this confirms anything, but it just leads me to think if you're going to have a second unit director that's really great with action sequences for season two, with all this rumored casting ideas that we've had, be it Boba Fett, Captain Rex, Cobb Vanth, um, Ahsoka Tano, anyone that we already know that has been rumored to be in this show, this could potentially shed some light on who is actually going to be in this and who is going to be performing in what capacity as far as the character arcs are concerned. I know second unit director hirings doesn't always sound like the most exciting thing, but just seeing how he wants to go about directing some of the shots in season two, it just gives me more excitement because I know that people are passionate behind the project that is The Mandalorian. So seeing this when it all comes out in October is definitely going to make me just ready for it. And as the months come along and we get more news and more information on what these action sequences are going to look like and if any of the casting is going to be revealed, I guarantee I will be covering it right here on my channel. But until I get any more news on any of those subjects, that is going to be it for this video, guys. Remember, if you like what you saw, be sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. Let me know in the comments down below if you want to see more movie news videos or if you'd like to see anything else. But until then, and as always, I will see you guys next time.